Hi, everyone. Welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell. We're back again with a guest from the community, and today it's David Roan. David began drawing as a child and has never stopped creating. From cartoons to fabulous puppets and toys to printmaking, oil painting, and his generous watercolors that make heroes of everyday objects. From a small town along the shore of Lake Michigan, he has studied art, taught art, and made art all of his life. And during its heyday, he was at Wyndham College where he created the art department he always wished that he had gone to. Welcome, David. Hi, Wendy. <laughs> it's great to have you on the show. We have, um, we have a lot to cover here, so we're going um, to move along. I was interested in knowing um, what your, and this is kind of a corny question, mm -hmm. but what's, what's your earliest memory of drawing or having that want to draw? My first memory is being sick in bed with a little table across my lap and drawing <clears throat> a comic. Uh -huh. uh, of uh, separate pages. Uh -huh. Tom X. <laughs> I don't know, it sticks in my mind. I lost my scrapbook. My, uh, my mother kept a scrapbook from all those years and oh. those beginning ones. Uh -huh. But I can still remember drawing that of yeah. uh, Tom X. And when you were a kid, there were a lot of popular cartoons actually in the papers. Oh, yes. 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 I had some in my drawer. I had a, uh -huh. my, uh, fr a friend of my father's knew somebody who was a cartoonist. Mm -hmm. And I got some of the originals which I carried in my drawer. Okay. My real interest in life was airplanes. Airplanes. Yeah. Yeah. And art was secondary. Uh -huh. Art was a way of making an airplane uh -huh. on the paper. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And your family supported you in art? Yeah, sure. They were not interested in painting mm -hmm. uh, themselves, or, or that kind of art. And in the town of uh, Ludington, Michigan, there weren't any artists. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was nobody for me to meet or anything, but, but that's all right. So anyway, I, I, I was interested in cartooning. Yes, not, not in painting. cartooning. Paint, painting as a separate form, as, a, as art, came much later. Came much later, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, and so as a kid, you were, you were doing cartooning, and you were um, very interested in airplanes and boats, I think, as well. Yeah. And other, other things or other influences when you were a kid? Girls. <laughs> <laughs> airplanes, boats, girls. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's a trifecta right there. But airplanes came first. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in time. Yeah. Yes. In time, they were first. And first, I went to military school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I wanted to go. You did. Because I was a child of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. In other words, I was a kid growing up through the movies of the first, Second World War. Yeah. And so that was, and so I was in uniform from the time I was eight or nine years old. Not in military school, but I had my own uniform, you did. and I had my own gun, and we had our own. So we were fighting battles in the backyard as kids, you know, yes. through those years nine, ten, ah. eleven, and when the time came time to go to high school, um, my dad said, "Well, it was sort of a family tradition this school, but I uh -huh. had a choice, and I said, oh, I want to go to the military school.' Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I just." I looked at that catalog and I said, there I am. Did you enjoy it? No, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed my part of it. I wasn't very good at being mil yeah. military. You weren't going to yeah. have a military career? Not with one eye, <laughs> for one thing, because oh. that happened when I was seven years old, uh -huh. with that accident. No, I'm usually fairly content where I am uh -huh. in places, and, and I was. I was proud of being there. Uh-huh. And um, I was good at a few things. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't singled out for a high rank. Uh huh. Yes. I and was a cartoonist. That was the debut, my uh -huh. public debut. Yeah. We had a very good school newspaper. So you were published at an early age. Yes, <laughs> it was so thrilling. It's so thrilling. I went to the Chicago Arts Institute for this that summer. 
And it wasn't in the class, but on the steps with the other students, some of the winter students, we'd, we'd hang out on the steps of the Chicago Art Institute and talk. And I started picking up from them they, you know, the real interest that some of my peers had. But it wasn't until the next year that, well, sometime around one o'clock in the morning and the fraternity house <clears throat> and I was on the floor working on some art project that I was doing all on my own. I was doing, I was doing greeting cards and cartoons. I was working for the uh, humor magazine, mm -hmm. uh, the Gargoyle, uh, <clears throat> and uh, and that. Uh, and this guy sucked his head in and he said, "Roan, why the hell aren't you in art school?" Uh. And it was like, bingo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I trans I transferred into the art school. Yeah. Did you get excited about it then? Oh wow! So yeah, it was the ugly duckling. <laughs> yeah, there, there I was. Yeah, the, a light yeah. went on. Probably doing a lot of different medium at that time. Uh, well, the uh, the usual course usual of courses, things. Usual courses, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sculpture and printmaking, and yes. a couple of sort of silly design courses uh, uh -huh. uh, that we had to take at the beginning, but I advanced through things. And I'd already, I'd been doing watercolors for a while. You had, uh-huh. Uh, and I had, uh, uh, in Ludington, which is a, a resort town, tourist tourist town, but on, on, the, on Lake Michigan, yeah. <clears throat> there was a Studebaker designer came came up there for the summertime and gave art classes, uh, watercolor classes, ah. and I joined up. Ah. And uh, and that was a revelation. Yeah. He had uh, he had he was very good. He uh -huh. had a very designer's way of constructing right. a landscape. We would go out and do it. After school you did a little bit of teaching. You I believe you um, did some teaching in Michigan and Mexico, and uh, a little traveling as well, mm -hmm. and you ended up in New York City. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And when you were in New York City, this was the 50s or early 60s? Uh, that was 62, 62 that we moved to New York City. Now, there was a lot of stuff going on in New York City in 62. I was busy in New York, and I did that, and I was showing, I was exhibiting etchings. Uh -huh. In, uh, <clears throat> in, uh, in printmaking, print oh. galleries, mm -hmm. uh, and inventing things, inventing the puppets, inventing the stuffed animal, yeah. yes. doing the stuff I'm doing frantic, frantic things, doing freelance cartooning. So you were making a living, though, in New York City. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I was teaching. I was teaching after school classes uh. of, of uh, little kids. So you had a paycheck. So that's saying something. A little bit, a <laughs> little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah. And and selling, uh -huh. selling stuffed animals. When you say you were selling stuffed animals and puppets, you were. Um, I've seen examples of some of, of these, and they were fantastical. They were fabulous and mm -hmm. very like almost have a bread and puppet kind of feel to them. You know, beautifully oh. made. And, uh, and and quite remarkable. Oh, the puppet. The puppets. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's an invention. I figured out how to make the talk, a hand puppet with a what, talking voice, oh. hands and what, and eyebrows. Uh huh. And eyebrows. And, <laughs> and you're a bit of you're a bit of a ventriloquist. Not a very <laughs> good one, but people don't notice. <laughs> but but it works. It's very entertaining yeah. to watch you do ventriloquism. Yeah, I, don't try. I don't try ventriloquism. You move your you move your lips. I certainly do. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and and uh, Miss Tulip, the uh, the queen of the puppet troupe, yes. calls me out on that all the time. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. They're fun. I hope you get to do that in in public again yes. because I think there's they're very entertaining. Um, how did you get to Vermont? How did you get to Wyndham? By this time, I really needed a job, so I applied. I needed a, I needed the paycheck. Yeah, and. Um, so I applied to the College Art Bureau when oh. they put out or wanted to see what was. And I got an interview with Walter Hendricks, the fo founder of Marlborough College and then subsequently 
founder of Marlboro. Uh, of Wyndham. Uh, of, of Wyndham, yes. yes. Of 64. Can you talk a little bit, David, about those early days in Wyndham, early days for you? Oh, they were a panic. <laughs> we were, Wyndham was very tall, tiny. It had, it had been shrinking gradually and then been a, a revolution against the administration <coughs> um, the year before. Um, uh, and, and many faculty quit. Hmm. Uh, uh, and um, it was a similar thing happened in Marlboro, where, where Walter got nudged out. Hmm. Things turned around right away. It wasn't me and it wasn't uh, Gene Winslow who came in as, a pres as the president. Partly that, he's a very dynamic guy, but the yeah. demographic shifted. Yeah. The baby boomer babies yeah. started arriving. Yeah. We were th thin on the ground at the beginning as far as covering things, and I was a one-person art department and art history. <laughs> I have to say, from right from the get-go, we had some brilliant students. Hmm. Some of them still come around, they had Wyndham, they had a, uh, they had a, a reunion, um, a few weeks ago here, really? and they still keep coming back. Ah. Coming back to Land Landmark College is very generous and opens up a you know, yeah, space for an art exhibit. There was and and talks and things like that. So there were a hundred or so people really? came back. Yeah, oh, that through, must have been th kind this of fun. summer. Yeah, they're very enthusiastic, and some of you know, and, and some of the some of the very er early ones that were there in '64. Uh, we had to pretend to be a college, <laughs> in the sense I remember, I remember the president saying, "Look, we're starting. We're having a lecture series. You faculty, I want to see you there. We need, we need an audience." <laughs> yeah. So we bring in a distinguished teacher, but we. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, yeah. And you did have a, a couple of very distinguished artists who were part of the. Oh yeah, the well, when I could, when I could begin hiring. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> people. I, I didn't go the usual route. I just uh, got in touch with uh, some of the better galleries in New York uh -huh. and said, I'm looking for a sculptor. Uh, do you know anybody who <laughs> needs to get out of town <laughs> or wants to? Mm -hmm. And that's how I hired Chuck Jennifer. I went down there, I looked at his work and uh, yeah, uh, his uh, His work was important. His yeah. personality was secondary, but it was okay. We became good friends. <laughs> you did become good friends, right? Yeah, Chuck Jennifer, yeah, for he, folks in the audience. He yes. just died a couple of years yep. ago. Yeah, yep. I miss just him. Uh, monumental, huge sculptures. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he's very well-known sculptor. Yeah. And then we hired, and then we hired Peter Farrakis, Harold Feinstein, the great photographer. Mm -hmm. All, both of them acknowledged authentic professionals on the cutting edge of of art. You know, so I I, I held down the conservative line, <laughs> line of it <laughs> in in, the sense, in in my mind. That's what, that's what I was, yeah. and I was I was teaching painting and printmaking. David, after. Um you left Wyndham, which was, uh, Wyndham pretty much dissolved in the early 70s, 74, something 76. like. 76. 76, yeah, wait, 76. 76. Was, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, where did you go from there? What did you do? Well, I had already decided to <clears throat> try out my six guns in Dodge City. In other words, I had asked for a leave of absence uh, to go to New York, go back to New York to uh, see if I could, uh, <clears throat> if I could do it. Yeah. Uh, and, and and to stop teaching for that time. And Wyndham obliged by going essentially bankrupt in, in, in that time. <laughs> so I went down to New York and, and had a whole fresh start. So I, uh, and I was quite a different person than I had been in 1963 when I first uh -huh. arrived from the Midwest. I mean, I had a lot of painting, done a lot of painting since then. And um, I uh, started pushing my watercolors. Mm. Um, I, I got some good advice from uh, from um, Ivan Karp, 
the uh, well, well-known dealer, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, about uh, about the abstract oil paintings I was doing, and I thought, ooh, yeah, maybe I go 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 to my hobby of doing watercolors, and I started pushing that, uh, doing doing just watercolors and doing still lives, uh-huh. uh, mainly, uh, quite intensely, mm-hmm. and began showing. I got a place to live, and uh, started showing group shows mm-hmm. and, and meeting people and teaching. And I was teaching at uh, Drew University outside of New York, oh, uh-huh. uh, but uh, as an adjunct. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and in other places, too. I taught at Queens College. Mm-hmm. Then got, got into, a, into a gallery up on Madison Avenue, uh, the Horn Ashby Gallery. Three or three or four solo shows there over mm-hmm. the years, and and then I'd been uh, in group shows. It was mainly watercolors during that time. Entirely watercolors. Entirely. I was doing uh-huh. only watercolors, uh-huh. and I did some commissions. I have a commission. I have a watercolor uh, at a law firm in 50, 50, 57th Street in Madison, a, uh-huh. a fancy law firm, that, a watercolor that's 20 feet wide and 4 feet tall. Yeah, and it, here's it the thing, bit. i got to say, <laughs> when I've seen your large watercolors, mm-hmm. and also knowing that you're doing a watercolor that's 20 feet, 20 feet? 20 feet, Wow, yeah, yeah. that's incredible because yeah, anybody... From, from life. From life. That's yeah. crazy. Anybody yeah. who's who's worked with watercolor, uh-huh. I think, knows what a challenge that is. So yes, the yeah. fact that you yeah. are doing actually monumental watercolors. The interesting thing, because I work from observation, is that to you have to keep your eye in the same place, hmm. looking at you. You can't walk up and down twenty feet. Yeah. So I had to make a table on wheels, so that uh-huh. I could, and I could roll the roll the watercolor <laughs> back and forth. Yeah. <gasps> And that's done, and I've not, I've never done another one that big. But Mitchell Giddings has, has some of my yes. la- larger watercolors. Yes, they've yeah. shown some of the, some yeah. of your shows. Yeah. Include that those. A, yeah, they're really wonderful. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great that you got to go back to New York and yeah. have another yeah. life. Yeah, and, and I actually had a career and was able yes. to stop teaching and, and was. It was selling enough work. That was more than three acts. Yeah. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> well, I did quite a lot. Of Foreign yeah. travel. I had gr- you know grants to Japan and yeah. grants to France and, mm-hmm. and NEA and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I loved living in France. Yeah, and I lived and I and I went there on sabbatical too, uh-huh. and, and, and so I spent quite a lot of time in in southern France, uh-huh. uh, you know, Marseille. Yeah. Travel, you know, it informs you, you know, in one way or another, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had some adventures. Adventures. Sailing adventures on the Mediterranean. Uh-huh. That's, uh, oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> they put, <laughs> there were adventures. You talk a lot about the application of attention and the observation of space when mm. you're an artist, when mm. you're a painter. And, and I see it again and again in your paintings, relationships, you know, whether it's a still life between the objects, whether it's in design even in relation mm. to each other. Can you talk a little bit about that? For me now, it's it's very much about the process, hmm. uh, and what I've been thinking about recently. I don't know if there's a clue. I mean, but uh, at <clears throat> at what I suppose I suppose is towards towards the end of a long life of just looking at things, looking at still hmm. life. Mm-hmm. It's a. Uh, um, very interesting, intense situation for a human being to be in, just keeping company with a still life, the quiet hours. Yes. Uh, it's uh, there's an oddity in that. So it's in there's something in that process that is more. Much more important than the than the result. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, the result comes out of the, out of the process. Uh, I I have been. I'm not prepared to do a Cezanne lecture, but I've been thinking more about Cezanne. I think about him a lot. <laughs> and that, that in that situation that 
that raw situation and, uh, is so, so scientific mm -hmm. in that way of Cezanne looking at a still life and thinking, what's going on here? You know, here I, there's the still life. I see it in three dimensions. I have this two-dimensional thing. Mm -hmm. I'm making the equivalent. And here, the equivalent of my experience. I'm having an experience of that. It's not that I'm seeing, just seeing it. You know, right. But you know, if I, I'm having an experience. How can I get... Anyway, it's, it's a very quiet, yeah. mysterious sort of... I don't know where the mystery is. At any rate, uh, when I was thinking about this talk, I said, well, actually, I don't have to be able to explain what I do. I just have to do it. That's right. Yeah. There's so much in psychology involved in managing this art factory that is me. Mm. <clears throat> And I don't know how to direct my forces because I have the quiet, studious forces of, of just applying myself to looking at something and drawing it. I have the playful forces of, mm -hmm. hey, loosen up. Mm -hmm. I'd say, let's play with this a bit. You know, mm -hmm. let's, mm -hmm. let's make some puddles and, and uh, see where that leads. Yeah. And, and then all sorts of history admiration of art, art history, art historical pieces, and yes. they're, all, they're all in plays. Yeah. And, and then there's the uh, <clears throat> human resources element. I have to manage the psychology of this person that's pushing the brush. And sometimes you say, no, 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 you don't need to go <laughs> launching into something big. Do think small, do a little, mm. study. Let's just look at that. Mm -hmm. Let's just look at that and study and refresh, refresh. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that, it's, what a weird, it's, it's a strange way to lead the life. It's isn't? very interesting, yes, because you know, you talk about um, giving yourself up to it, mm -hmm. giving yourself up to whether yeah. it's uh -huh. the canvas or the paper or, mm -hmm. or whatever, and yeah. the process uh -huh. even, mm -hmm. I think is what, that's what you're talking about too. And I'm forgetting grandeur. 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 Uh -huh. Pardon uh -huh. me, folks. There's grandeur. Because every once in a while, a situation, an arrangement, an, architect, an architecture on the page in the format that will come about just through what I'm looking at and a little bit there. And I'll think, oh, this is as if I just discovered a Beethoven sonata in the trash. Look at this. Look what is given to me. Uh -huh. Look at that. How that matches that. And this is symmetrical. And this rhythm starts to, whoa, uh -huh. <laughs> got to do that. So the, oh, it's a thrilling life all, all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> all by myself in my studio. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it does sound thrilling. And it, it's, it's those, you know, you talk about these moments of discovery. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I know that uh, you often, when you're drinking your morning coffee, you'll look at a painting that's okay. that's sort of in process yeah. and seeing something completely different. Uh -huh. You know, or seeing um, some somewhere that you can go with it. Mm -hmm. But one thing you said is uh, painting is risky. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're yeah. taking a lot of chances all the time, right? <coughs> uh. Yeah, except when I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a study isn't risky, but it's something, well, I don't know. It's a good idea to take risks mm -hmm. once in a while. Mm -hmm. it, it's this, this multi-layer multi personality that I'm dealing with. It, you know, sometimes you need to just put that aside, go back to the same still life, mm -hmm. and paint it fast. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, just just let just let it fly. Yeah. Leave the color out of it. Do it in the India ink and and um, India ink wash and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. And then go back to the other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see and and maybe it'll be a third painting that comes out. It's just right. a part of the digestion yeah. of it. Yeah. But and and also the mystery of it, you know, you going back to what you're saying uh -huh. about um, you know, sort of the secret languages of art that you keep 
discovery and rediscovering. Oh yeah. You know, the underpinnings, a lot of it is underpinnings as you say. Mm -hmm. You know, the study and the practice that you've done over all of these years mm -hmm. um, and the relationships that come out of them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, also it's, it's something great that goes out beyond your mind, you said. Yes. I have a faith that my intuitive mind far exceeds the boundaries of my normal mind. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was the argument, just throwing yourself into something yes. madly and letting, letting an intuition uh, take over and yes. see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another approach. Can't do that every day. It comes down to you're good at it or you aren't. But to find out if you're good at it, you got got to be working. What, who, yeah. who Picasso said, but the, the, muse will, the muse will come, but it has to find you working. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be in, uh -huh. into it, into it. Right. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's hard, hard to pin it down. Yeah. As, as like a, uh, you know, like a, a, a folk singer, a singer, a singer could sing a song in a way that just breaks your heart. And it's not in the words of the song, and, 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 and the exact notes could be duplicated by another singer who would not break your heart. Yeah, It would, right. could be I, almost identical, yes. but there's some quality. So, so there's that part of it, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you just have to do lots and lots of work and see what, what floats. Yes, yeah. yes, and yeah. you never know what's going to move you or a viewer. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Or the painting yeah. itself, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sort of a receptacle of whatever is flying in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're in the studio almost every day, right? Yeah, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Split wood. <laughs> There's that in Vermont. Uh -huh. There's definitely that. Uh -huh. Your studio is like an installation. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's years and years and years of all kinds of things mm -hmm. that have inspired you or that you have sort of kicking around that you might use sometime, you know, in a still life. Um, it's a world unto itself. Yeah, I feel it's very luxurious to have a studio right there in the home. And yes. Don't, not feeling like going any place nowadays. I do, I do like, like having the studio right there at home. Yeah just a minute ago when you were talking about not knowing, you know, what's going to come out, mm -hmm. not knowing exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you actually quoted Wolf Kahn saying, of course the work can be spiritual, but you can never set out to make it spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was good. And that's what you've been saying with something great that goes out beyond your mind, uh -huh. the stillness, yeah. you know, that comes. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> well, David, your art is beautiful. I really encourage folks to um, keep an eye on David uh, because he's had um, a few shows at Mitchell Giddings, our mm -hmm. wonderful local gallery here in town. Mm -hmm. um, and you're still showing in other various places. Thanks so much for all of the beautiful things that you brought into the world mm -hmm. for us to see mm -hmm. and experience mm -hmm. and have a relationship with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for coming on the show. Well. Thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure. And thanks to all of you for coming on the show, too, and being part of it, um, listening to David's stories and uh, the many things that he's done and uh, how he approaches not only his paintings but life in general, too. So stay tuned. We will be back with our next show, and thanks for being here.